Thank you for joining us today. Just a few quick reminders before we get started. All attendees are muted. And if you're using the event app, we encourage you to check into the session, update your activities, and be sure to complete the session survey at the end. This session is TLP White and is being recorded. Recordings will be available within 24 hours via the app. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to your session moderator for today, Natsuko Inui. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. This is Natsuko Inui, and I will be moderating this session today. Um, the session you are listening to is product security, education, and prevention through root cause analysis in sec secure software development lifecycle. Um, just one item before we get started. Um, we ask you to submit your questions for Q&A. In the Q&A section, you will see a Q&A icon in your screen. So please submit your questions there. Um, questions will be queued in the order received and we will address them as either we go as we go along or at the end of the session. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and get started. Um, so today we have two speakers from SAP's product security response team, um, Stuart Short, based in Germany, and Shipra Agrawal, uh, based in India. So Stuart and Shipra, they both have a vast experience in vulnerability handlings. Um, and I think without further ado, I should hand it over to our speakers. So over to you, Stuart and Shipra. Hi, um, my name is Stuart short and welcome to our presentation. I've been working for SAP for over 14 years now, mainly in software security. I've worked in the cloud area, research department and PCERT based in Waldorf, Germany. And I'm joined by my colleague, Shipra, who is based in our Bangalore office. So I hand over to Shipra to start. Yeah. Hi all, uh, very warm welcome also from my side and uh, I'm Shipra Garwal from Product Security Incident Response Team and I'm also with SAP and with Software Security for more than 13 years now. And uh, some of the key roles that I have uh, done in the past few years is managing the uh, monthly security patch days for SAP, couple of bug bounty programs. Um, uh, and I have been also working with Stuart lately on the root cause analysis implementation and execution in the last couple of years. And yeah, with that, uh, thank you very much for taking your time and joining us for this session today. We are really excited to share our learnings and experiences while implementing root cause analysis at SAP. Yeah, so let's get started. Um, uh, this is how we are planning to go about this session today. Uh, we would like to first, uh, you know, uh, introduce uh, you uh, to the root cause analysis concept as such. What do we mean by it? And then we will see how it makes sense to incorporate it in a secure software development lifecycle and how we have gone about implementing and formalizing it at SAP. Then we will walk you through the step-by-step -step methodology that we have uh, been following when we do a RCA for a vulnerability. And uh, we would also you know, like to talk a lot about our experiences and learnings uh, in the past few years while doing this exercise. And uh, with that, uh, we would also you know, like to uh, show you some key benefits that we have seen uh, in the past years and that we are expecting to see going forward of, uh, while doing RCA. And with that, we hope to give you a lot of insights into how you can go back and implement a successful RCA for your organization. And yeah, so I would like to start with this famous quote, uh, which is very much applicable uh, for us in our day-to-day -day lives, which says, uh, when you make a mistake, there are only three things that you should ever do about it. Admit it, learn from it, and don't repeat it. This is actually the uh, you know, exact foundation of root cause analysis concept uh, because it talks about uh, learning from our past mistakes and working on it so that we don't repeat them and don't encounter the same problems in future. So that being said, uh, let's look at it a little bit uh, more in detail. So I want each one of you to think about the last major problem you had at work. Did you take the time to find out the un, uh, you know, uh, actual underlying cause or did you dealt with the uh, symptoms? Yeah, did you implement a quick fix that only dealt with symptoms? RCA is a popular exercise of finding the underlying cause of a problem. 
and this technique is useful because when we work on the root cause we are actually also finding many uh, issues associated with it rc helps us to understand how and why a problem occurred so you can work on it and avoid it from happening again so basically you're not just putting out fires but you are ensuring that you don't encounter the same problem in future so it helps us to answer three basic questions uh, to address any problem uh, what is the problem why did it happen and what can i do to prevent it from happening again basically you can apply rca in any situation but however uh, to determine how far you need to go in your investigation will depend on the situation and your judgment so with that uh, let's see how it makes sense to have a rca in so secure software development life cycle what you see in front of you is the typical flow of an studl or the software uh, secure software development life cycle and uh, we are very very much aware of the fact that psirt or security response comes in the utilization phase or you know at the last phase of this cycle however uh, we perceive this as not only a juncture for issue resolution but also as a feedback channel to the preceding phases of the process and it is with these other teams that we need to take some time out after every patch day uh, to reflect on any learning so that we could reduce repeated findings and bring systematic improvements to the life cycle also we had a look at the psirt framework uh, provided by first and uh, uh, we found that the service 6.5 talks about providing feedback mechanisms and it says that uh, use information gained during the root cause analysis of the incident to educate the folks involved and prevent similar vulnerabilities in future yes so we looked at it when we looked at it we found that it really makes sense and we should incorporate this in our processes so then uh, we uh, went and we started discussing the concept with our leadership and stakeholders to see what is applicable and what should be considered and what kind of vulnerabilities should be picked because uh, as we know that it is practically not feasible to do an extensive root cause analysis for every vulnerability that we fix yeah so after a couple of uh, discussions we came up with the uh, uh, these three aspects uh, that is who should be the stakeholders of this exercise which phases and services uh, in studl would be in scope of our uh, analysis and uh, how are we going to document our learnings or the findings and insights of all the analysis that we do and how are we going to share it with the stakeholders so once we uh, decided on the concept uh, myself and stuart we went back and started uh, you know putting down the details of how we are going to implement and formalize this as a process and we started with the five step uh, a uh, five step uh, rca process which is generally available and we adopted it to a four step process uh, which goes like this uh, the first step being defining the problem so in this step we actually you know at the at every patch day we look at uh, all the vulnerabilities that we have fixed and we try to identify the vulnerabilities based on different criteria which we want to analyze and once we have identified uh, those vulnerabilities we start you know gathering facts and information around it by looking at the incidents the security patches uh, the affected products and components and who were the people involved in uh, the uh, in this particular fix and with that uh, we move into the second phase uh, which is called the collect data phase wherein uh, the part of it which we have already done here we go a little bit a step further and we start conducting interviews or you know deep discussions with the experts that we have identified from psirt uh, from the developers the product owner the security testing and validation colleagues and so on and we start uh, you know understanding uh, their experiences of what went well what could have been improved and uh, you know uh, all uh, uh, the timelines that were followed the process that was followed and so on and we don't just uh, you know focus only on the vulnerability in question but we try to you know look at it at a you know holistic way to find out uh, how the security measures were implemented in the whole product as such and we also gather the threat modeling reports uh, the sas tool scan reports or the security validation reports and so on 
and after collecting all this information and the experience sharing from different experts uh, we uh, go back and move to the third step which is uh, about identifying the causes or the root cause now we uh, sit and analyze all the artifact artifacts that we have collected so far and see how uh, you know uh, we could uh, the uh, how we could improve the security posture of this uh, product and what could have been done to prevent this vulnerability from occurring again in future we also try to zero down on the actual design or implementation flaw that caused this vulnerability and we try to document all these findings and analysis and recommendations in a structured report and uh, with that we now move into the fourth and final step which is recommend and implement solutions here uh, the report that we have created so far uh, putting across all our learnings and the findings and recommendations uh, we you know structure it and share it with the stakeholders that we have identified and uh, the however the onus of implementing these recommendations lies with the uh, lies with the stakeholders from the business unit but we do provide support and uh, guidance required on implementing these recommendations and uh, which is basically uh, you know which um, concludes this four step process on a higher level and now what uh, we would like to you know show you the detailed step by step methodology that we follow uh, while doing a root cause analysis for a vulnerability uh, so for that i would like to hand it over to my colleague stuart so thank over you, to Shipra. you stuart yeah. thank yeah. you shipra um, so first of all coordination the, the pcr team was asked to lead and coordinate this activity since our service encapsulates the process from the finding of a potential security problem to an issue being resolved. Um, from the outset, the stakeholders had agreed that they wanted to develop a culture of transparency and openness without fear of reprisals. This ethos uh, is reflected in the reports where we tried to abstract to a systemic level with highlighted problems not focusing on a particular individual. Uh, moreover, we feel that constructive critical analysis should always try to propose recommendations or potential solutions that resonate with all stakeholders. And when choosing an incident for RCA, we want to be on the same page as our stakeholders and base our decisions on either the criticality of the finding or other criteria such as quantity of issues related to the same product or recurrent issues. All available documents are shared so that we have a common understanding. This also reveals at an early stage any access issues that a team may have for a particular resource. So um, yeah, next slide. So um, execution and delivery. So after having read through the incident and the related documentation, uh, we set up interviews with concerned parties from the different phases of the secure software development lifecycle. We usually assign one note taker or one interviewer, and the interviewer being able to actively listen to the interviewee's perspective of what happened. Um, it's also important to formulate an opinion and not to ask questions that lead the interview to a desired outcome. Uh, straight after the interview, we share the minutes with the interviewee and make corrections if necessary. We also have standardized our reports for consistency purposes, and also this facilitates an aggregate analysis over a certain time period. Next slide, so follow up. Uh, when the reports are circulated, the shareholders, stakeholders have an holistic view of the problem with different perspectives representing the different phases of the secure SDL. They are also presented with recommendations made by the team and more often these are emanating directly from the teams outlined in the report. There are follow-ups done to ensure that improvements take place. We identify where learnings can be disseminated and push this information to different teams to document in their trainings or wikis containing best practices. The ultimate goal is not to have a vulnerability type coming up again for a particular product. And in the case that it does arise, it is tracked with a view to understanding why it happened. So our experience, SDLC learnings, next slide. So, um, as mentioned earlier in the presentation with root cause analysis, 
as well as reducing repeated findings, we wanted to test the hypothesis that the phases and services were understood. Based on our experience, the overall outcome was positive with minor improvements recommended in training, tooling, modeling, documentation and processes. In some instances, we realized that whilst it is good to have processes and tools in place, it is necessary for different teams to get together to troubleshoot on configuration issues, improving test coverage or reducing true positives or false negatives. Other cases have shown a need to go beyond the finding and look for other possible weaknesses. So next slide. Um, when you have a mindset that aims towards prevention, you can reduce vulnerabilities, reduce errors through automation, be open to improving processes and policies and discover problems that may not have been obvious. The collaborative nature of RCA lends itself to fostering a sense of community among security experts. Next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, when a company has an open conversation and methodology to critically analyze and set up on issues, it has a better chance to improve. Working together to resolve issues generates an environment of trust and willingness to collaborate. Finally, mistakes can and will happen. However, the goal should be to have a mindset that is adaptable to change and aim to reduce the recurrence of issues. Uh, maybe Shipra, you would like to add something here? Yeah, sure. So yeah, thanks to what for walking us through those uh, detailed steps. And what I really want to emphasize here is that uh, we as security professionals should function like engineers and not just as gatekeepers. And we should definitely have the mindset of let me help you build that safe and not use this exercise as a you know, way to finger point or find faults with a particular product or a team. But use this uh, or utilize this for building a culture of continuous learning and helping each other improve as a community. So this mindset is really important for any such exercise. And also, uh, this is a continuous process of incorporating the learnings from RCA to update the security measures in our SDLC. So this uh, is uh, not a one, uh, you know, one go thing, which, was, which will start and end, but um, it is a continuous process, continuous learning process. Yeah. So that being said, uh, we hope this gives you enough food for thought to get back to your organizations and see how you can implement it. Or if you already have a matured RCA, we would definitely like to hear your experiences and stories. And with that, uh, we come to a conclusion and uh, we, uh, you know, we have shared our contact details. Please do reach out to us to share any comments or suggestions that you would have. And uh, uh, thank you again for your time. And uh, maybe we can uh, you know, take the rest of the time to answer some of the questions that we have. So thank you, Shipra and Stuart. Um, so I had a question for you. Um, so Stuart, you showed us that you have templates to make things a bit easier for everybody. Um, yeah. Are those templates based on, based off of something or is this something you developed completely on your own? Um, could you kind of talk about the templates that you have? Uh, maybe we can go back to that slide, uh, Shipra. Uh, so this is something that we developed uh, on our own. And uh, so, um, yeah, definitely the structure came. Uh, it, it took a couple of iterations and some RCAs uh, before we developed this uh, final structure. And uh, well, I say final, but I, um, we're actually looking to uh, add uh, perhaps other factors into this as well. Um, for example, uh, looking at maybe metrics, measurements, and uh, things like that. So yeah, this is something that we had developed ourselves. But of course, um, yeah, if we're willing to take feedback from um, peers in, in PCERT and uh, even eventually sharing this with FIRST and seeing how we can develop on something like this. Natsuko, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So, we have a question. We have a question from the audience. So the question is, how do you manage RCA for software R and D that stretch across over one hundred teams? Wouldn't it be time consuming? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I can take. Uh, so uh, right now we do uh, 
you know rca for security vulnerabilities that are patched and these vulnerabilities are reported by external sources usually researchers or customers so uh, and we uh, you know uh, utilize this uh, uh, as i mentioned the software uh, security development life cycle maybe i can just move to that slide give me a second yeah so uh, the studial life cycle uh, is is our focus so uh, every product uh, that uh, you know is released with sap uh, goes through this cycle and um, these are the various you know security procedures that we follow uh, starting from training and uh, you know uh, planning and risk assessment and Uh, the development itself and what kind of testing do we do within development uh, like the sats and dust scans and so on so uh, our focus right now is uh, you know uh, on these aspects of studl uh, whether we could improve anything in the trainings or you know or whether uh, we have some inputs to go back to the threat modeling yeah so uh, so we you know uh, look at these aspects and try to drive the improvements in the respective teams so right now uh, we don't we are not dealing with 100 teams we are dealing with the product team and the testing teams and the threat modeling teams and so on yeah so uh, threat modeling and the testing is mostly done by the development and then we have the validation team separately and the response team is is us yeah so these are the four or five teams basically in our focus and um, even the set of people that we are working with for a particular analysis is uh, ranges from not more than probably you know uh, five to 10 because we want to be very specific and not you know accumulate too much of information from everywhere but uh, just focus on what the vulnerability we are talking about and how we can you know uh stop it from happening again yeah thank you okay i hope so, that answers yeah yep um and if there are further questions please submit them in the q and a box so the next question is can you give some maybe sanitized examples of things you've learned as part of this process Stuart, you want to uh, start, or should I? Um, so, so sorry. So, sanitize. You mean that um, some real cases like that? Uh... I believe this is some examples, um, or and sanitize them if you need to. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, basically, uh, what we've seen is, uh, as we mentioned in the um, in the presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Um, Yeah, we've come across uh, cases whereby we may have a finding, and uh, yeah, maybe teams should have taken a bit more time to. Um, but if they've come up with a patch, of course, but maybe look at uh, different attack vectors, and uh, so maybe spend a bit more time um, on the situation, and uh, so also for uh, threat modeling and um, yeah, things like this. Um, Other cases that come up were, uh, the, as I mentioned, about the false positives and kind of configuring tools properly, um, so that you can get maybe a better analysis on your code. Um, so uh, this uh, happened whereby uh, teams took the default and they didn't specify um, a configuration and for their needs, and uh, so it just took basically um, people from different departments getting together and talking about um, how they configured it and. Uh, So people didn't realize basically that some like two lean departments were also a service that they could actually go on and talk to. And uh, so um, definitely through RCA, this has helped um, get people to, to collaborate, to talk and uh, yeah, to get better results basically. Thank you. So question after question here. So next question is, once you collect the lessons learned, How do you ensure that they are really considered and not forgotten? What are your strategies? So, in the maybe I can start off, uh, Shiprin. You can follow up. Sure, but, sure, yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, this is presented to um, the stakeholders and all the parties in, involved in the form of a report, and uh, so our leaders take it seriously and uh, they follow up with their peers. 
uh, in the org charts. So, um, so we take it from different angles from bottom up and top down. And uh, so, um, yeah, uh, so that's our main strategy is that. Um, and of course, uh, we have to, to see that uh, things, if things come up again, then obviously it didn't work. Um, the message has, hasn't been um, passed properly. And uh, so we have to visit basically what's going on here um, with communication trainings and things like that. And uh, if you wanted to add. Yeah. I think you covered it. Yeah, it's it's actually the it's the most valid question for this uh, you know exercise that how do we ensure that the lessons learned are taken up uh, seriously. So yeah, as uh, Stuart mentioned, uh, I think uh, the first step is uh, you know to drive it with the leadership and uh, have buy-in from the business unit heads also that uh, they are strictly you know uh, taking uh, taking it up for their units. And we also, you know, uh, try to follow up to an extent, but uh, of course the development units uh, are, uh, or the stakeholders are responsible for driving them for their uh, pro uh, products. Yeah, so we cannot at more than uh, an extent get into it, but we, uh, you know, uh, try to regularly uh, come back. And if, if, we, if uh, for example, if we have a, you know, uh, vulnerability coming up again for the same product and that is in our scope and definitely we take that chance to see where we you know were uh, where was the report uh, from the last time was it how much was it taken seriously and were there any improvements done for that yeah so that is one way that we do but yeah we also rely on the business unit stakeholders to drive it for their teams yes Okay, so we have maybe one and a half, two minutes left. So maybe final question. Um, so one question, how do you handle vulnerabilities in end of life products? Uh, so um, yeah, maybe this question is kind of out of scope for this presentation as we're looking at root cause analysis uh, methodologies. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, a question for yeah, vulnerability handling in general, but this is uh, kind of out of scope for this presentation. Okay, um, so next question, I think will be our final question. Um, you mentioned about the use of threat modeling in your process. Will you be able to share the type of threat modeling tools that you use in helping to identify and perform RCA? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, I don't think we can, uh, you know, uh, disclose the tools that we use inside uh, SAP. And also uh, we don't use any threat modeling tools for RCA. I mean, uh, for doing RCA, it's basically, uh, you know, talking to people and uh, finding out facts and uh, documenting the facts and so on. So there is no tool involved in uh, performing an RCA as such. And, uh, uh, and would, just coming so, to threat yeah. modeling tools, I don't think we can name. Yes, Stuart, please go ahead. Yeah, just to say that we have access to uh, resources, as mentioned in the presentation, to artifacts. Um, so uh, we, we can access things that have been done already, you know, if there's any analysis that has been done. So we okay. take this into account. Okay, with that, I think we are under um, less than one minute. Um, so it is at half past now. So please um, let us thank our speakers for speaking today. And thank you all to the participants who stopped by to listen. Um, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day at the virtual conference. Um, and please, everybody, if you could log off of this session and log into your next scheduled session. Thank you all and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.